Well, good morning again, everybody. Welcome to Lynn on the Line. This is Lynn Gardner calling in from beautiful Virginia. It's cloudy, and they're calling for rain over the next few days, just in time for that Memorial Weekend, right? But it doesn't matter much because we're still on lockdown, and our governor has suggested that at least for my area, my immediate area, which is apparently a hot spot for the COVID-19, we're on lockdown indefinitely. Certainly not the best of news on the planet, but it's always a beautiful day and a beautiful life if we look at it with the right set of eyes. Amen. You know, I've, I did venture out the other day. I, I've been hunkering down most of the time, not for fear of catching whatever that thing is, but I'm a rule keeper and, and that's what I'm told to do. And it, it troubles me also to go out there where people are kind of creeped out just to be in your presence. And the, and the checkout process in the grocery store looks more like a drive-in bank teller. But anyway, I, be, I began to think about how many businesses are actually thriving like never before in the middle of this mess. You know, we're inclined to focus on the ones, and, and maybe yours actually, that aren't thriving, um, but a whole lot of money is being made in this mess beyond just toilet paper. Give an example, the plexiglass business. Man, it's booming. In fact, it's being labeled as the new gold. Can you even imagine you know, how much money is being made on plexiglass with every open establishment required to shield themselves from the, pu- from the public? Boy, that's finding a need and filling it. How about the labor it takes to install that plexiglass? They sure don't duct tape it up the plexiglass you know uh, it's it's that shield to the the, you know to the cash register and it gets installed you know what a side gig that would be right now or at least it was if you caught the wave in time how about those step stickers on the floor you know establishments are required to measure and mark that six foot you know distancing requirement congratulations to the manufacturers of those stickers uh, being sold to all the establishments how about all those takeout containers you know restaurants normally certainly use a few of them each month as you you know take your leftovers home but they're now serving up every single meal in a takeout container on the curb no doubt most of them are styrofoam and they'll be with us for decades how about computer sales through the roof as people prepared to work from home you know and upgrades you know were in order to do that or perhaps they didn't have a computer work with a tablet and they had to transition into you know more technology how about headsets you know working from home always requires mobility, multitasking, if you will, especially when you're juggling kids and things like that. So, you know, headset sales are through the roof. How about Zoom? Or conference calls like this one, through the roof. Even the stock is, is going through the roof for Zoom. How, you know, how about uh, stands to hold multiple bottles of san- hand sanitizer that we're seeing out there in the stores and that sort of thing? $500 a pop, and they can't be made fast enough. How about portable restrooms? You know, talking about uh, businesses, they don't even want you inside to use the restroom. They don't want the liability. They don't want you suing them, saying you use the restroom and you got sick. So they're just hiring out those restrooms. Somebody else can provide it and clean it and stock it, right? So how about that kind of money? How about Amazon and other online ordering resources that keep us out of the store? It's immeasurable. And it's so funny. You know, it's always somebody to be whining because you see people whining. You know, it's taking longer than usual to get our stuff from Amazon. <laughs> just thank God you can get it. So you might not have soaring sales in your business right now, but that doesn't mean there are no needs. There is and will always be a lot of success to be found when the market shift. It's, it's always about finding the need and filling it. If you want to succeed, that is. And the need is not what you perceive it to be. It's what your customer base or consumers perceive it to be. In Philippians 4.19, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And that's a good thing. Listen, God Almighty knows our needs long before we do. So what about identifying the needs in in the marketplace, making that living, if you will? What does that look like? Well, listen, situations change, conditions change, even people change over time. So the key to success in every area of life comes down to recognizing the change and taking action to fill the need. It's true in relationships. It's true with our children. It's true in the journey of faith. And it's definitely true in business. Life does not remain status quo you do. So as time goes on, the needs in a relationship change, for instance. People change over time. That's just the way it is. And when the needs change, it's time to fill those needs. But so many people fight against the change, and they dig their heels in for things to remain exactly the way they were instead of working to fill the needs. And that, my friends, is why so many relationships fail. You know, the narrow-minded square peg of the past into the round hole of the present will lead to a train wreck every single time. It's true with 
our kids. You know, things change there too. They grow. They change. Sometimes they, uh, you know, hit a, hit a rebellious mode or whatever. But for instance, if you insist on babying a child long past the babying stage, you're just going to raise big baby. You know, seriously, you know, we need to recognize the changes and address the needs accordingly from the way we talk to them, to the rules, to the guidance, and to wisdom for that season in life. Wishing kids would remain small and helpless just so they need you forever is selfish and it's not healthy. And you see the remnants of that in adults today. Crippled adults, not capable of flying on their own. We see it the journey of faith. You know, today we see a lot of changes. I'm very grateful, frankly. Not that the churches are closed down like a fort, but because they've been forced to step out and meet the needs of today. You know, there are churches that actually have church splits over what kind of music's being played. You know, where the churches are trying to adapt to, you know, the new millennials to try to, you know, fill it up, fill the church up with younger people. They're trying to adapt to that need, right? And there's church splits going on because nobody wants that music to change. And we definitely see it in business. Good people with good products and and or good services with absolutely no idea how to adapt to change. So they keep doing the same thing over and over again while expecting a different result in such a time as this. That's definitely the definition of insanity. It boggles the mind when entrepreneurs attempt to put a square peg in a round hole as if they if they just keep forcing it, they'll find it. But it's not the market that will adapt to you. It's you that needs to adapt to the market. And many of you have learned to adapt to work in your business online these days. It's so re- beautiful. It's refreshing to see you do that. Some, something most of you just refuse to adapt to until you were forced to, and that's not a bad thing. And I hope you see the benefits of that today. But there are a few of you out there refusing to conduct your business in accordance with the needs. For instance, refusing to learn to use things like Zoom. You know, if you've made it uh, to this call, if you're listening to a replay, whatever the case is, then you have what it takes to learn. You're just refusing to do it. To one, it's one thing to adapt to the way we do business. It's another thing to adapt to the needs, to find that need in the marketplace and fill it. It, it, it isn't, you know, what you like to do or what you insist on doing. The reason most successful entrepreneurs have multiple streams of income is not just because they have some sort of insatiable appetite for money. It's that they understand the market's going to shift and the needs are going to change, and they're armed and ready to shift to address the needs. Your message uh, for things like health and wellness will always be a powerful message that's needed by all, but that doesn't mean you'll find that need and fill it in such a time as this. Sadly, more people are concerned about being broke and dying than they are about spending money to sustain or regain health, and that's the truth. You know, it's a sad reality. For most of you out there, your message is not or should not be as narrow-minded as having a good source or sources for health and wellness. Your message is so much bigger, and it really gets tapped into. For instance, with social distancing going on, any message that can make life easier, safer, and sensible is what the world's going to be looking for, not health and wellness. You know, I shifted from talking just about having a healthy body at this time when people are more focused on, on debt and dying to a very strong message about money, and it's paying off. It's not just talking about the opportunity to build a business. I'm talking about eliminating debt without making extra payments, that sort of thing, right? Not credit repair, not credit counseling. We're talking about total freedom from debt. Don't you think once I have the opportunity to fill that need, that I have an ideal opportunity to circle back around and talk about a healthy life too? You better believe I do. If you don't see those dots connected, it's likely you never will. You know, you won't find me trying to fit a square peg in a round hole when I have a chance to fill the need, you know, if I'm just willing to do it. You know, that's true in my life, in every area of life. It's, it's about blessing someone else. Some, you know, sometimes that's with my faith. Sometimes it's through my family. And sometimes, or most of the time, actually, it's in my business. I can't bless potential clients if I'm barking up the wrong tree insisting on putting a square peg in a round hole. The only way I can bless another human being is by meeting them where they are and filling the needs whenever and however I can. Remember, the needs are not what you think they are. The needs are what they think they are, from relationships, again, to family, and the journey of faith, and in business. So, 
I have my finger on the pulse of life and I'm never letting go, anticipating the times when I'll need to adapt in accordance with the needs. And I'm successful in every area of my life because of it. If I'm willing to adapt to change in a relationship, for instance, to do my part to fill those needs, I'll benefit from a long-lasting, beautiful relationship. If I'm willing to adapt to you know, change in my family with my now-grown children and a whole tribe of crayons, then the result will be healthy, beautiful, godly relationships, and the legacy of my faith will go on for generations. If I'm willing to adapt to the needs of the lost, doing my part to fill their needs of the day, I've got an amazing opportunity to share what I know and to lead people to their faith. And if I'm willing to go with the flow of the market and fill the needs out there to the consumer needs at such a time as this, I won't just succeed. I'm a soar. So what's it going to be for you? You know, will you continue forcing or trying to force a, a, a square peg in a round hole, pushing and persevering something in a world where the needs have actually changed, at least for now? Remember, it's never about what you want to say. It's about what someone wants needs to hear. And it's not about what you think they need. It's it's about what they think they need. So I encourage you to stop determining to just, just sit there. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep pushing a square peg in that round hole and, and start adapting to the world around you in terms of the needs. That's how you get a life that's larger than life, folks. When and only when you're willing to roll with the flow of life in every area of life, including the market, that's when you find your success in every area of life. So guys, listen, there are challenging times out there, but I just gave you a pretty good picture of businesses that are soaring, that adapted to the needs, and they're filling them. That's all we ever do in life, from our personal life to our spiritual life to our business life, is we determine to find the needs and fill the needs. So I hope that you'll get you know, some blinders off, that you'll look at this life, this world, this, our circumstances, our market with 2020 vision and start spinning that message so that you can find a need and fill it with what you have. So you guys go be blessed, make it a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>